Welcome to the Cowboy Bros Podcast. I'm your host, Terrence, and with me is my co-host, Jason, calling in for the Beck Cave in Indianapolis. Jason, how are you, my good man? I'm doing quite well, sir. Hey, this is the first episode of year two, so automatically having good vibes. Ready to get into it. Yes, sir. Thank you for listening. This is episode 54 of the Cow Pop Bros podcast. For the uninitiated, Cow Pop Bros is the podcast to hear. We are a weekly podcast for fans of sports, current events, and entertainment. And as always, we are your hosts, Terrence and Jason. And every single Thursday, we bring you a brand new episode where we discuss the current events of the day, sports, and the athletes we love. And even some of the athletes we loathe. No matter the topic, you can expect a really honest and fun exchange of snark while learning through the lens of our 30 years of friendship that originated in Calumet Park, Illinois. Folks, for more Cal Park Bros content, make sure you connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and TikTok under the handle Cal Park Bros or Cal Park Bros Podcast for more behind the scenes of the show and just to engage with us every single day. But as I always say, don't forget that the Cal Park Bros Podcast is available to listen and subscribe for free wherever you Listen to podcasts. Like us, love us, share us, follow us. And folks, if you like us, hell, why wouldn't you? That's right, folks. Like Terrence said, we are the podcast to hear and watch. So make sure you're living it, loving it, and okay. doing it. Um, first segment we're talking about, uh, as Jason has said offline, Mike Tyson's punch out. Um, and frankly, I mean, that's clever. But the real star of the show is, why, why would you mess with Mike Tyson 30,000 feet in the air? <laughs> Jason, I find it fascinating that literally after we do the CPB Q and A related to who would you rather uh, be be in a fight with for one minute, Chuck Liddell or Mike Tyson? And of course, you said Chuck Liddell, and I said Mike Tyson. But ultimately, where we landed was either way, you're gonna die. <laughs> it's not gonna be a good time for you. We we pretty much said, hey, that's a bad idea. And it's especially a bad idea, 30,000 feet in the air. Um, and so we the story came out um, that Mike Tyson basically was just waylaying this uh, passenger on on the same plane as him. Um, and pretty much any, a lot of people have seen the, the video where Mike Tyson has given this guy the business. And the response has been pretty much pro Mike Tyson at this point from my, from my vantage point. Um, people always see the response. Rarely do they see the antagonistic uh, words and actions prior to the response. And so even with some of Mike Tyson's, you know, checkered history, I think a lot of folks were just like, man, leave this man alone, you know? He's still a celebrity. He's still, you know, world class Hall of Famer boxer. Um, but that that's been my assessment thus far. Once this story came out, <laughs> Jason, where where do you land on this? So first off, we're, we were doing the Q and A last week. I actually said I'd rather be in the ring with Mike Tyson for a minute. Uh, my my premise was that hey, you know what? I think I can for one minute. I think I can avoid any heavy punches by him, but so so forth and so forth. But that's why this topic kind of came about, because it just coincidentally, yeah, this happened. Uh, where do I stay on this? Now, of course, like you said, we all see the video that's put out there, like two separate videos, sort of the before, the during, a little bit of the after. But what's missing, like you said, is what happened? What did that guy sitting behind Mike Tyson do to trigger him? Right? You could, the first video, you can see the guy kind of being all up in, up in Mike's business a little bit, trying to play it up for the camera a little bit. And then obviously you see the video of Mike, you know, turn around, you know, swing on the guy. And then the after video showing the guy with a bloody, a li- I don't want to say, when I say bloody, I mean there's a little blood trickling out, yes, forehead or whatever. However, there are witness statements saying that the guy was being overly aggressive, even saying to the point he was harassing Mike. There were some reports, but I don't know is true. That was a water bottle thrown at Mike. I don't know how whether or not that's true or not. But the videos don't show any of right. that, really. So all we're going off was of his witness statements and the videos, blah, 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 blah. Police didn't file charges. I believe because the, the I don't want to say victim, but the guy who got hit chose not to, which I have a premise as to why he didn't. But my stance is, 
at the end of the day, again, without seeing what else was in the video, I'd say they were, they were both in the wrong. Right? Obviously, if you're if you're a I don't even want to call this guy a fan, but if you're a regular Joe Schmo individual, or a schmuck as Terrence like to call likes to call people, if you're just random schmuck, you don't need to be harassing anybody or trying to, you know, get clout on the internet trying because because you're trying to harass Mike Tyson or whatever you're trying to do. But on the flip side of it, if you're Mike Tyson or really any uh, any other celebrity, especially if you're a professional athlete of any kind, or especially a former or current professional fighter, you need to know better that you swing on the fan, short of you physically defending yourself because you're being physically, physically provoked, we'll say. Short of that, it's not going to turn out good for you in, in many cases when you're when you striking somebody or hitting somebody or kicking somebody or whatever just because they're a fan. Whether it be 30,000 feet in the, on a plane or whether it be at some random bar, restaurant, the local park, whatever. You got to know better. And that kind of leads me quickly to my premise of the guy. I'm surprised that hasn't happened yet, but it wouldn't shock me in the next month or so, two months, whatever, if we see on the news a guy attempts to sue Mike Tyson for getting hit. I mean, I mean the video evidence, evidence is there that obviously it happened. So there's that. Whatever other factors come into play, we'll see. But I did find it kind of weird that he went. The guy went to the police to report the incident, but didn't want to file. Well, yeah, <laughs> I think I think your premise is well founded, Jason, because the screams ambulance chaser to me. You know, I don't I don't like the idea that basically um, this guy's going to get a pass because yeah, it looks like he's kind of being a schmuck. I mean. At one point, Mike Tyson is sitting down and this guy is literally hovering over him. And I don't like the idea that basically, oh, because you're a celebrity that I just have to put up with this shit and and, and suffer these indignities. Because at the end of the day, they, they, they were both in first class, right? <laughs> and... You know, from my from the looks of it, Mike Tyson's minding his own business. I always think this is fascinating when people are like, you know, well, that's that's the price of fame. I'm like, mm, I don't I don't accept that 100 percent because like, like what's the price, the price of, fame of fame basically is that people get to treat you like shit. That people ignore your humanity. You know, we 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 we've talked about a lot of subjects. One of them is consent, and I always th- think it's think it's odd when imagine if someone says, "Hey, can I get your autograph?" and you say no, and you basically just going to keep hounding this person into submission. Well, I will say that there were reports out there that Mike did take a selfie with the gentleman, so it's not like he didn't you know like acknowledge the guy at all, or at least do something for him. But I definitely see your point exactly. Again, obviously, depending on what happened, selfie gets taken, guy doesn't want to back down. I don't know if he's excited and then it turned into other stuff. I don't know. But I just want to point out that Mike did supposedly acknowledge the guy when it comes to taking a selfie with him, which is probably better than an autograph in 2022, frankly. Um, I just want to put that out there. Go no, ahead. I th- I just I don't I don't like the be I don't like the behavior because it just seems like especially the video I saw it's like seems like his um, the the guy that I believe his name is Melvin <laughs> and uh, no shade there but if I were Melvin's friend I probably would have advised him like hey man Melvin you got to chill so you you have to know your limitations. And it just feels like he very much overplayed his hand, and then, and then he got the hands basically. Yeah, I mean, when when people say yeah, that's the price of fame. There is a certain line to that, though. I mean, yes, when you have celebrity and you're out in public, there are people that are going to come up to you and want to ask you for your picture, autograph, shake your hand, whatever it may be. Yes, that's the price of fame. True. Treating like crap, yeah, that's not. That's over the line. That's when it goes more into the side of the fault of the of the, 
again, I, 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 with this guy, I, want, I don't want to say fan, but you put that more in the hands of the fans when they cross the line. Them asking for autograph picture, that's not crossing the line. Yes, of course, you as the celebrity, quote unquote, yes, you have the right to say no because you're still a human being, right? Now, obviously, when you do say no, you're going to run the risk of somebody overreacting one way or another, either getting mad or being a jerk to you or going to the point of har- harassing you, which this guy, Melvin, which is his name, Melvin Townsend, Townsend III, total black guy name, but Yeesh. Melvin Townsend III. <laughs> yeah, he, he went over the line, clearly. So, yes, there's a price to fame. And I think everybody who signs up to be a celebrity, you have to know that and you have to be okay with it to a certain degree. But again, I go back to, you remember, okay, it sounds kind of weird, but remember some episodes ago we talked about Cain Velasquez and obviously, you know, a lot of people were saying they they wish that he would have used his hands instead of using, you know, a gun. So kind of the same thing. Obviously, Vlad Tyson didn't use a gun, obviously, which he wouldn't have had because he's on a plane. He chose to use his hands, but even in this scenario, would have been better if he got a flight attendant or something like that as opposed to swinging on somebody. Because again, obviously, that puts Mike Tyson in the wrong because, well, he chose to hit the guy. And now, if a guy does file a lawsuit, I don't know what could be said for, again, I'm not a lawyer, but I don't know what could be said short of, again, him pushing, pushing you, swinging on you, def- you defending yourself to say you're not going to get sued. So that's why I say they're both in the wrong. But yes, there is a price of fame, but there's still a line for both parties, fan, quote unquote, and also the celebrity. You said that um, you don't believe he was actually hurt (laughs) or it seemed like you were making (laughs) light to basically he wasn't really beat up. Oh, the Melvin thing? Well, okay, so. I guess maybe I'm comparing things to how I would imagine that if I got punched in the face several times by Mike Tyson and the worst I got was a little slight blood trickles on my forehead. Yeah, I got hit by Mike Tyson, but you, but you know what? If my face is still recognizable, <laughs> you know, I think I, I think he didn't get beat up that bad. And again, according to the videos, he like he was pretty coherent enough to still be filmed by his buddy in the opposite seat to, you know, Get direction from him. Hey, show me your forehead. Yeah, this. They seem like they were really into documenting the injury. So, so again, I think we. I can imagine what's coming. I'd be shocked if it didn't. But that's why I say it didn't seem like he was really that hurt or beat up because he's still coherent. He's still focused on getting his buddy the camera shot yeah. or whatever, and he's not. It wasn't unconscious Correct. on the floor. So that's why I think he wouldn't yeah. beat up that bad. Yeah. So. I, I uh, was thinking about that too. It it did feel somewhat performative. Because I'm like, dude, you just got into an, an encounter with a he- former heavyweight champion of the world. What's up with the pouty McPouty face? Are you having this documented? It's a, he's trying to get a come up. That's what it seems like to me. I mean, I don't know if that's how things started, but that seems to be how it pretty yeah. much ended up. Hey, I just got punched in the face by Mike Tyson. Did you get that on camera? Let's take a little further. Let me show you my bloody forehead. See these two little trickles right there? That's where Mike Tyson hit me. Give me my money. Yeah. Now, if you thought he didn't say give me my money in the video, but again, just my thoughts. I'm not, obviously I'm not in Melvin's head, so I don't know. No, that's Mike Tyson's job. <laughs> clearly. Clearly. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, dude. I I I I I hate the whole thing. Uh, and I hate the idea that basically if somebody throws something at you anywhere, that basically you just got to sit there and take it. Um, well, nobody's saying you got to sit there and take it. That's different. And again, like I was saying, obviously Mike chose to swing on him, which that was his choice is what it is. But for the betterment of yourself to make sure you're not coming out, get, you know, going to lose some money out your pocket. That flight attendant, right? Push the call button and say, hey, get this guy out of here. You know? Which maybe, which maybe he did, maybe it didn't work. I don't know, but sure, it doesn't seem like based off the lack of that information in the report. So that doesn't seem like it's what 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 happened. But that might have been the smarter idea. So no one's saying you got to sit there and take it. I'm not saying that. But from my Tyson side of it, 
probably would have been a better idea for you to not to, for a trained fighter not to be punching people on planes short of you again being physically provoked in doing so. Hey man, I I feel like the only thing that was missing was Nick was Nick Cage on that plane. We can get this Con Air two action going. <laughs> yeah, okay. I also Mike Tyson's probably got a you know decent legal team. There's no guarantee that these guys are going to win. So and I say guys because it feels like a team effort. <laughs> no, I mean and that's fair. Maybe obviously you know. We'll see what happens with that. Maybe nothing will come of it. Maybe the guy's got enough embarrassment yeah. on his plate. Maybe he's, maybe he's got warrants and he's not trying to take it too far. You know, uh, I, I'm not going to go into further than that, but um, yeah, maybe he's got, maybe he's trying to avoid certain things. We'll see. Maybe will nothing will come of it. Maybe he's got his 15 minutes of fame. Maybe he's, he'll be happy with that. So, yeah. I remember when you said, see, man, he's not, he's not bleeding that bad. He, I I'm like, yeah, he, I Cause he's up damn near 30,000 feet in the air. <laughs> You know, had it had that had that had that encounter happened on the ground, it might have been a different uh different result. <laughs> uh when it well maybe. Maybe it, there might have been less. Maybe he might have took the one the one shot knockout and been done. Right through the jaw, boom, done. No bleeding at all. You're just on the floor unconscious in the airport. So which is probably yeah. even worse. But uh yeah, so it's what it is. Melvin has his fifteen minutes of fame and and we'll see what happens from there and see what Mike does in response. Right. Well, that, folks, that concludes our first segment uh, regarding uh, <laughs> Mike Tyson's punch out. Coming up next on the second segment, we're going to be talking about some changes potentially coming down the pipeline for it. Netflix. Coming up next on Cowhart Rose. 